Hey everybody, Miranda Patron here, back to do another mandala tutorial with you. We are going to try something a little different this time, kind of in reverse. So ordinarily, when you are doing your mandalas, you start from the center and work your way out, and it helps keep the symmetry. Well, I have an idea to try something a little bit different, where we're actually going to overlap our dots, but I need the biggest one to be on the outer edge. So we're going to start with those first on our outer edge. So let's get started. Alright, so I am starting off with the background already painted on my stone here, as you can see, in black. And what I did was pick a center point where I wanted my mandala center, and then I kind of drew a guideline circle with a compass. So I'm actually going to back this out a little more here to show you, I think. There we go. So the compass, mine's a dollar store one, was well, not expensive at all, but you could also... Um, use two points with a tack and a string and go around it with chalk. Uh, there's lots of different ways people do this. Some people can do it with two pencils, but this is just a little dollar store compass. And I found my center and drew a circle just around so I could see where I wanted the outer edge of my dots to start. There, so you can see my center stone and then you can see out here the outer ring. Now, the difference with this design is it's going to take a little bit more patience um, on the creating part. Maybe not from the video watching standpoint, because I'll just pause it while we're waiting for the paint to dry. Um, but I'm sure you guys don't want to sit there watching paint dry, so I will pause it while it dries, and we'll continue on. So it'll be a little sped up. But as we go, it's going to have to dry each layer in between just for reference, um, so you don't think that I'm just putting wet paint upon wet paint and having it work out perfectly fine. That's not how it's working. I'm actually pausing in between each round. Alright, so you're going to have to bear with me as I go for this one because I have not actually done it before, so this is all new to me as well. Kind of a learning as I go here. But I think what I will do is draw in guidelines as well, and that way will help keep our symmetry as we make the design, and you could be able to follow the lines maybe a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm just going to take my tape measure, find my starting point here, and draw us in some grid lines. And this will, like I said, just make it a little easier to keep the symmetry of your mandala. Ordinarily, when I start from the center, I don't draw lines. I just start from the center and work my way out. And pray it ends up okay. <laughs> No, it, it usually does. If you keep the dots about the same size, then I have pretty good luck with that from a mandala standpoint. But this definitely will help so that we can see where our dots are going to go on the outer circle of our mandala. A lot of times, too, when I'm doing a mandala, I start off in the center and I have no idea where it's going to end up. I just keep adding in different designs and you come up with something new every time. So... There, we have our grid lines in, and that will start with our largest dots on the outer part of our circle there. And I have seen lately a lot of people have found the brush that I've been using. It's wonderful, isn't it? I love it. The bend helps you see. It's a great size for making multi-sized dots. Um, I've used it for entire stones before I haven't had to even switch tools or switch brushes, whatever. I can just use it all with this one. So this is the Princeton Angle Spot Detailer. And the one I have is a size 10 zero, And I absolutely love it. So I hope you're all enjoying it. And I hope it's you're finding it helpful to make the dots with brushes. I'm actually going to go a little bit bigger with this dot. I want to start off with the largest one, like I said, on the outside. But again, we're starting from the outside, so it's a little bit different than the usual mandalas. And right now I'm using, I'm going to do purples and kind of like a gradient. So right now I have this, um, oh, where is it? purple pearl 
from Deco Art, one of their mon uh, metallics. I got mandalas on the brain. I almost said mandalas. One of their mandala paints. <laughs> nope. Just metallic, Miranda. There we go. And these ones are a little thicker. You might have to pare them down a little. Thin them down a little with some water. I'm going to keep turning my stone as I go because I like to work at the spot right in front of me. I find it the easiest. So I apologize for the constant turning of the stone, but I have difficulty reaching over and handling it that way. Some people are amazingly talented and can just whip it all on there, across the stone, above the stone, upside down, painting, who knows. <laughs> but I am not one of those people. Some days are steadier than others with the hand, in the hand department as well, so today is definitely a stone turning day. Alright, so I'm also not used to working with grid lines, so I'm finding myself having a little bit of obsession with making sure I get it right on the lines, but it doesn't have to be perfect. There's ways of adjusting the size of your dots and really just make it your own design. I kind of like that about freehanding things and it really makes it your own. It's really handmade, hand painted, hand designed. It's super fun. It's relaxing to do. Don't it doesn't feel like you're constrained to the shape that you've drawn. But I think this will work out pretty well. So as I said earlier, you won't notice, but I'm gonna pause in between so that these can dry and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so somebody suggested that I alternate between brushes and dotting tools since people use both, so I will try doing that here. And we have our base down of the purple on the outline. So we're going to do a kind of a reverse mandala. And so we're going to start from the outside in instead of the inside out. As I said. And remember, I'm letting these dry in between and pausing it. So I'm not putting wet paint down on wet paint. Okay, so this is our next dot that we're going to overlap with here. So it's going to be creating a different design because we're going to be overlapping the dots all the way down to the center to just kind of create a different effect. And all our dots usually go from the center out and we don't have them touching and but I think that it's good to branch out and try different things, be brave and See what happens if you just try something different. You get a completely different design, which can be really fun. This is a nice, rich purple. I like this one. The first one I used was a metallic purple from Deco Art. And this one is Deco Art as well, but they're Americana. The purple pizzazz. There. Thank you. 
think this is going to come out super pretty. And you can do different color variations or do like an ombre effect, light to dark. I think it's just going to come out awesome. I think it was good that we did the guidelines on this one but just for me personally especially because like I said normally I work from the center out and when we're overlapping like this I wanted the biggest one on the outside because I think it's going to make a really pretty design for us here. It already you can see it's a total different look than you're used to probably on the mandalas. It's just awesome. I'm super excited about this. <laughs> okay, I can't remember if I left off doing a brush or a tool, so I'm just going to grab my brush to do this next row. <laughs> Okay, I really love this new metallic deco art pearl that they have. Or maybe it's not new and I'm just finding it, but it's like it already has the glitter in it. It's awesome. Shiny. Makes a beautiful center. Okay, so like I said, I'm kind of just winging it as I go but I think that I might just do a bunch of little white dots leading up to our purples. It got smaller faster than I thought it would to continue on the pattern, but I think that that'll look nice too, and then we can start filling in the pie pieces here that we have. I'll use a dotting tool. Maybe I'll just do one more white one to overlap at the bottom and then we'll continue on down towards the center with just varying dots getting smaller and smaller but I'll just continue on with the white till we get to the center so I think that'll look sharp so purple is the color of the year I'm trying to use it a lot more I've never really had a strong affinity for purple, but the more I use it, the more I am really growing to like it. Okay, so that's our latest little white one. And now I'm going to separate from the pack a little bit, so I'm not overlapping anymore. And I'm just going to keep on working towards the center until the brush runs out of paint or until I get to the middle. And the measurements are a little bit off, so you're probably, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm not going to have the exact same amount. But today I'm not counting, I'm just enjoying painting. I really enjoy trying to create different mandala designs. They're and just keep adding little accents and you have a whole new design and as long as you keep the symmetry by doing the same thing all around sometimes I get a little wacky and I just want to break up the symmetry and do a couple different flare things on it but I think symmetry is part of the beauty in these it's also very calming I kind of have an obsession with liking things to be orderly and if you have three children like I do, a one-year-old that's running around getting into everything, and a ten-year-old who loves to create trash art, 
Um, and then a teenager with a floor drobe. That's what she calls where she puts her clothes on the floor. Um, yeah, so things aren't always as orderly as I would like them to be, but I always have the painting, and when I put that varnish down over it, it stays that way forever, <laughs> unlike dishes and laundry, which are never done, or I have to keep redoing, right? But that's okay. That is life, and it's beautiful. I am so excited about how this is coming out, and I hope you are too. So stick with me. I'm going to let this round dry. So it'll be a quick pause for you, but I'll come back to it a little bit later for me. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've erased my guidelines because I'm hoping I'm not going to need them anymore. I'm going to work from the center out to fill in those sections in between now. And I think we're just going to keep this one fairly simple because I don't want to take away from the design effect that we've made here with the overlapping dots. I just think they're gorgeous. So I don't want to take away from that or draw attention to elsewhere on the stone because I want that to kind of be our focus when you look at this stone. So I think I'm going to contrast it maybe with a nice turquoise. Yeah, I think I will go like teal and turquoise in the in between here. It'll help contrast our purple really nicely. Okay, so I have this really pretty teal metallic from Deco Art. And I'm going to go dark from the inside to light so that we can contrast our lighter colors here. So we'll use the darker teal to start our progression from the center and then work our way out. And this way the light, uh, pardon me, the white really shows up against the dark teal. And I think in retrospect now, I probably didn't need the guidelines. I could have done the teal first and used that as my guideline, if that works better in your mind, which I think I might do next time, but you can start as you would a, a natural, regular mandala from the center and then use the teal as your guideline, as it were. So whatever color you chose for this line here, then it would be your guideline and you could start these opposite that after the fact. And that way you wouldn't have to erase pencil marks and have eraser or if you use chalk or sometimes I'll even etch right on the, I don't know if you can see that here, let me move my camera. I etch onto the black background if I've painted black and I'll draw things on there. It makes it easier to see and then when I go over it with my varnish or just some water, it erases. Okay, so we'll let that round of teal dry and I'll be right back with you. Alright, so I have this really nice turquoise here that's probably the next shade I have go a little lighter. And I just realized that I'm only using my brush. I'll switch back to the dotting tool for the next one, but you can do it with either. Apologize. Plus when I keep stopping the video in all sincerity, I forget which one I used last. And if I stop the video, it resets, so I don't want to lose all the progress that we've made up to here. Yeah, I might have to delete that dot. I messed it up a little. And if you don't know how to fix an oops, I do have a video on that. But one of the benefits of having a black background is that I can just go back. If I mess up a dot like this one, I'm not happy it's not round at all. But I'm just going to wipe off the best I can and then paint black over it again. Oh yeah, see I'm messing it all up here. Paint black over it and redo that dot. 
Maybe I had a little bit too much coffee today. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. Actually, I decided I'll just show on here how to fix an oops again, because even though I have that video, it's still helpful to go over it again. So what I try to do is scrape off as much of the paint as I can, just to make it flat again, and dry it off. And then I go back to find my black. What did my daughter do with it here? And make sure that this is dry here. That's another reason to spread it out because it dries a lot faster the flatter it is. And then I can just go over it again here with the black background. Just try not to mess up my other dots. And then you don't have to toss this whole piece. You can just fix that one section where the dot was messed up. And keep on going. Alright, so I mixed up another, I'm waiting for that black to dry, and I mixed up another level lighter of the turquoise here. And I'm switching back to dotting tools here for you too. So we're going to go the next space up here. And we'll wait to do this section until that's dry because we don't want to have to redo it again. These colors are so calming. I love turquoise. Reminds me of the ocean. There. Alright, we'll wait for those couple rounds to dry now. amazing how you can walk away from something and come back to it and it looks even better than you thought the first time. Or if you've been working up close with something for a while, it starts to get, um, I don't know, you're up so close to it, you see every flaw, everything that you might not think is perfect and I, don't, I have to walk away from pieces sometime and come back to them. But just to walk away for these to dry and come back, I'm like, wow, this is great. I'm so excited for this design. And I hope you like it too. So now that our black area is pretty much dry, I'm going to fill that back in with the darker turquoise and the lighter one that I mixed up ahead of a bit. There, that's a little bit better shaped. I got a little crazy with the brush earlier. And a lot of times I wait in between putting dots next to one another because I've had them bleed into each other. Which is actually how I came up with the overlap ideas. I've had them bleed into one another and went to think about how I could turn that into some other design or fix it. And I decided to just keep overlapping. So I'm really excited that these are turning out so nicely. I love the purple and the turquoise together, too. These are going to be great. Okay, so I think we'll do one more lighter colored round there. When I'm using a dotting tool, I find it, if I can't make the size that I need, I just kind of draw it in. I'm a paint pusher. Push the paint around 
until it gets to the size that I want it. So you don't necessarily have to have a dotting tool that size. You can just push the paint around to the size circle that you would like. Hi buddy, you coming to visit? Are you singing? Getting a little serenade from my son here. Are you singing a song? So you have completed the reverse mandala. Alright, so I, like I said, I don't want to detract from seeing our wonderful design here. So I think I'm going to stop there with this mandala and then just do, because this is an odd shaped stone, it didn't fill in a circular manner. So I'm I feel like I'm just going to make like a teardrop outline around it here. And then I will be done because sometimes less is more. Alright, I have this nice metallic blue that I'm going to use I think for my teardrops around. I mean the teardrop line. Water droplet. As you can see, I'm just working my way around the stone to kind of make a teardrop water droplet shape. Alright, so we finished our mandala, our reverse mandala. I think it worked out pretty well. Hope you enjoyed doing this with me. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Um, also, if you like my videos, obviously please give me a thumbs up. And feel free to share them with others. Um, if you're looking for other videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll see the latest videos that I come out with. Alright, thank you all for watching today and I hope this was fun for you. We sure did make a pretty one. And uh, we will make more in the future. Alright, have a great day.